I've had hundreds of people request a battery charger review, so the question is, is that $10 charger just as good as the one that cost $90? Well, let's find out. In the first test, we'll compare charging performance. Then we'll see which battery chargers offer the best float charge capability. Unfortunately, not all the chargers will survive the safety testing. At a price of only $10, the least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Heck Hobo. It's a 12 volt, two amp battery charger that also works as a trickle charger. They claim it has a built-in circuit protection for reverse polarity. It also offers overcurrent and overload protection. Designed for flooded lead acid batteries as well as AGM and gel. And the Heck Hobo is made in China. Weight is sometimes an indicator of quality, and the Heck Hobo is very light at only 130 grams. In the first test, let's see if the battery chargers can begin charging a completely dead battery. I'll be using a multimeter that comes with the certificate of calibration for testing. I'll go ahead and clean up the battery post just to make sure that all the chargers make good contact. I'll be using an energy use meter that's plugged into a 120 volt outlet. It'll let us know with absolute certainty when the chargers begin the charging process. And this battery is just about completely dead. The Heck Hobo shows that it is powered up and it's on standby. It's not charging the battery and the energy use meter is showing zero watts of energy use. At a price of $20 is this Motopower brand. The Heck Hobo claimed to be a two amp charger. The Motopower claims to be a 1.5 amp hour charger. It's designed to be a charger and a maintainer for cars, motorcycles, ATVs, and more. It comes with an extra ring terminal harness so you can install this permanently. They claim it has a spark free technology. It also includes alligator clips. And the Motopower is made in China. It has a microprocessor control program to prevent overcharging, short circuit, and reverse polarity. And it's 322 grams for the Motopower. The Motopower uses about one half watt of energy when it's plugged in and it's not connected to a battery. The Motopower is connected to the battery, but the charger is showing that it's not charging the battery. The energy use meter is still around one half watt. Also the price of $20 is this Next Peak brand. And the Next Peak is a six amp battery maintainer, charger, and desulfator. They claim it can charge and repair all 12 volt lead acid batteries. The alligator clips seem like decent quality for a $20 charger. And the next pig is made in China. And the next pig weighs 406 grams. The next pig is plugged in and it's not connected and it is using about one half watt. The next pig is now connected but it's not recognizing the battery. Even in pulse repair mode, the next pig does not detect the battery. We'll also be testing another battery charger maintainer made by Next Peak that also cost $20. The other charger maintainer made by Next Peak was 6 amp. This one's 1.75. It's designed for all 6 and 12 volt batteries. It's supposed to automatically cut off the power when fully charged. It has three different options, standard, repair, and trickle. It's also supposed to offer floating charge capability. And the Next Peak is made in China. And it's 202 grams for the Next Peak. And a 1.75 amp Next Peak charger is showing zero watts of energy use. After connecting the charger to the battery, it's still showing zero watts, so it's not charging the battery. At a price of $24 is this sweater brand. It's a 6 amp, 12 volt automatic smart battery trickle charger, battery maintainer desulfator with temperature compensation. They claim it offers intelligent 7 stage charging. This includes desulfation, soft start, bulk charge, analysis, recondition, float, and pulse maintenance. And the sweater brand is made in China. And the sweater weighs 450 grams. The sweater is using around 0.72 watts before connecting the charger to the battery. There's no override or force charge option with the sweater, so it's not going to charge the battery. At a price of $24 is this Black & Decker brand. It's designed to work with 6 and 12 volt batteries. It's rated for 1.5 amps. It's supposed to stop charging automatically when the battery is fully charged or topped off. It's then supposed to automatically switch to float mode. And the Black & Decker is made in Vietnam. And it's 418 grams for the Black & Decker. The display of the Black & Decker uses about one half watt of energy, but there's nothing on the charger indicating the charger is powered on. No indicator lights are illuminated on the Black & Decker and it's not charging. We'll be testing two different battery chargers made by NOCO. The first one costs $30. They claim it's a one amp smart battery charger. It's also a maintainer, trickle charger, float charger, and desulfator. They claim it's 35% smaller and delivers over 35% more power compared to the G750 made by NOCO. They claim it can charge batteries that are as low as one volt. It also has a force mode to manually charge completely dead batteries down to zero volts. And the NOCO is made in Vietnam. And the NOCO weighs 346 grams. The NOCO Genius 1 is powered on and it's using around 0.15 watts. I'll engage the force charge option by pressing and holding the mode button for seven seconds and then selecting the battery type. And the NOCO Genius 1 is the first of the chargers to begin charging the battery. At a price of $40 is this Gulu brand. It's a battery maintainer, trickle charger, float charger, and desulfator. 
It's designed for 6 and 12 volt batteries. They claim it can devulcanize the battery and restore battery performance. They claim it has a 10 stage intelligent charging program. It's supposed to be able to charge batteries that are as low as 3 volts. The Gulu is supposed to produce 4 amps. And the Gulu is made in China. The Gulu weighs 592 grams. The Gulu was powered on and it's using around a half watt to power up the display. And this battery is just too dead for the Gulu. At a price of $45 is this Hulkman brand. It's designed to charge 12 and 6 volt batteries. It's a 5 amp trickle charger. It's supposed to work as a maintainer, desulfator, and a float charger. They claim it has 9 stages as a battery maintainer. They claim it can restore batteries as low as 0.3 volts. In repair mode, it can refresh those that are over 2 volts. And the Hulkman is made in China. And the Hulkman's the heaviest yet at 734 grams. The Hulkman is using around 1.18 watts to power up the display and it's not able to charge the battery. At a price of $50 is this Eco-Worthy brand. It's a 5 amp automatic smart battery charger and maintainer. Designed for lead acid as well as lithium batteries. It includes an O-ring terminal cables and an SAE connector with a 10 amp fuse. And the Eco-Worthy is made in China. And it's 544 grams for the Eco-Worthy. The Eco-Worthy is powered up and is using around 1.3 watts but is not able to charge a completely dead battery. At a price of $70 is this NOCO Genius 5. It's a 5 amp charger designed for 6 and 12 volt batteries. It's also designed to be a maintainer, trickle charger, float charger, and desulfator. It's supposed to be able to charge a battery that's as low as 1 volt. You can also use the force mode to charge batteries that are down to 0 volts. Pulse charging automatically detects and then reverses battery sulfation. And the NOCO Genius 5 is made in Vietnam. And the NOCO weighs 678 grams. The NOCO Genius 5 is set up just like the NOCO Genius 1 and it's able to charge the dead battery by using the force charge setting. At a price of $70 is this battery tender brand. It's a 4 amp battery charger and maintainer. It's switchable from 12 to 6 volts. It'll fully charge the battery and then automatically switch to float mode. Connect it and forget it. It offers a total of 11 feet of combined reach. And the battery tender is made in the Philippines. And the battery tender weighs 804 grams. The battery tender is powered up, but it's not able to detect or charge the dead battery. At a price of $90, the most expensive battery charger and maintainer we'll be testing is made by SeaTech. The SeaTech claims to be a fully automatic 4.3 amp hour battery charger and maintainer. Splash, dust, spark, and shock proof. Recondition your battery once per year after deep discharge to maximize lifetime and capacity. They claim it's a product of Malaysia and further processed in China. And it's 568 grams for the SeaTech. Just like the battery tender, the SeaTech isn't able to detect or charge a completely dead battery. Lead acid batteries emit hydrogen gas and a small spark from a battery charger could cause an explosion or fire. Some of the chargers claim to offer spark-free technology, but the Heck Hobo is creating a lot of sparks. Unlike the Heck Hobo, the motor power is doing a great job of avoiding sparks. And the 6 amp hour Next Peak charger did generate sparks when connected to the battery. The 1.75 amp Next Peak did a great job of suppressing sparks at the contact point. If a battery is emitting hydrogen gas, there might be a problem with the sweater as it's generating a lot of sparks. Unlike the sweater, the Black & Decker did a great job of suppressing sparks. Just like the Black & Decker, the NOCO Genius 1 also did a great job of suppressing sparks. And the Gulu also did a great job of providing a spark-free power connection. The Hulkman's a pretty powerful battery charger and it too did a great job of suppressing sparks. The EcoWorthy is probably not a charger that you want to use in a gas leaking battery as it does produce sparks. The NOCO Genius 5 performed just as well as the NOCO Genius 1 and did not produce sparks. The battery tender brand also performed well in this test and did not create sparks. The SeaTech claims to offer spark free technology and it delivered on that claim and did a great job of not producing sparks. So 9 out of 13 brands did not generate sparks. In the next test, let's see how the battery chargers perform at charging a brand new battery that's in great shape but it's badly drained. The top left corner of the green screen shows the battery's volts and the energy use meter shows the energy watts being supplied to the charger. The battery is at around 10 volts. I'll use a battery tester to temporarily lower the battery voltage to around 1 volt. Then I'll power off the battery discharger and allow the battery voltage to recover on its own. The Heck Hobo's display lights are flashing but the energy use meter is showing less than a watt of energy use until the battery made it to 8 volts. At around 10 volts the Heck Hobo is finally kicking into action and charging the battery at around 27 watts. That works out to just over 2 amps of charging current. The motor power's indicator light is showing that it's powered on, but it's not charging the battery at 1 volt. The battery voltage is now at 8.46 and the motor power just began charging the battery. The energy use meter is showing a peak battery charger energy use of just under 26 watts or just over 2 amps. 
At 1 volt, the 6 amp next peak began charging the battery, but the display isn't awake yet. And the next peak display is finally powered on, and it didn't take too long for the next peak to produce around 91 watts, which is better than a 6 amp rating. The next peak 1.75 amp charger came to life around 2.5 volts, and the energy use meter is showing around 10 watts of energy demand. That's just under 1 amp. At just over 7 volts, the next peak stopped charging the battery. At this point, I'll have to switch the next peak from 6 to 12 volts to continue charging the battery. Unfortunately, the battery default is set to 6 volts and you'll have to remember to switch to 12 volts. Definitely does not seem like a good design. After manually switching the charger to 12 volts, the energy use meter is showing around 22.6 watts. The sweater began charging the battery at around 3 volts. The display is showing amps, volts, and temperature. However, the amp reading does not appear to be accurate based upon the energy use. The sweater is being supplied with 40 watts of energy, which works out to around 3.5 amps and not 6. The sweater finally reached a peak energy consumption of around 86 watts, which is just over 6 amps. The Black & Decker is set up to charge a 12-volt battery. However, the Black & Decker is really slow to get to work and the charger's indicator lights aren't providing us with much information. The Black & Decker finally reached the minimum threshold to begin charging at around 9 volts and reached a peak energy use of almost 18 watts. The NOCO Genius 1 began the charging process with the battery charge level at close to 1 volt. The energy use meter is showing a fluctuation in energy use from around 4 to 5 watts until the battery made it to 6 volts. The energy use continued to rise as the battery voltage increased with a peak energy use of around 13.3 watts or just over 1 amp. And the charging process is underway with the Gulu at just over 3 volts as advertised. The top left corner of the display is showing 12 volt standard battery type which is what we're using in this test. The battery charge level made it to just over 9 volts and the Gulu suddenly stopped charging the battery. I disconnected and then reconnected the battery charger and the Gulu kicked back into action and continued to charge the battery. The Gulu reached a peak energy consumption of just over 60 watts. Just like the NOCO Genius 1, the Hulkman began the charging process at around 1 volt. The energy use meter shows less than 10 watts until reaching 11 volts. Once the battery reached 11 volts, the Hulkman really kicked into action and began pouring 78 watts into the battery. And the EcoWorthy also joins the list of chargers that began the charging process at around 1 volt. The energy use meter is showing a single digit charging rate until jumping to over 20 watts at 7 volts. And the input energy level continues to rise and it reached a peak charging rate of around 79 watts which is about the same as the Hulkman. And the NOCO Genius 5's active charging indicator just kicked into action at very close to 1 volt battery charge level. And the NOCO's energy remained in single digits until the battery made it to 7 volts. As the battery's charge level increased, the energy input increased and reached a maximum rate of 72 watts. And the battery tender isn't quite as ambitious to get going as the Hulkman, EcoWorthy, and NOCO and finally kicked into action at around 3 volts. The battery tender is producing less than 10 watts of battery charge until the battery finally reached 10 volts. And the battery tender continues to add higher charge input until finally reaching a peak rate of around 63 watts. The SeaTech kicked into charging action at around 2 volts. The SeaTech is a more ambitious charger at lower voltage levels compared to most of the other brands. At around 3 volts, the SeaTech is already producing over 20 watts. At 10 volts, the SeaTech is delivering over 50 watts of charge to the battery. And the SeaTech reached a peak charge rate of around 65 watts. The next peak, NOCO 1, Hulkman, EcoWorthy, and NOCO 5 all began charging the battery when the battery's charge level was at 1 volt or less. The SeaTech began charging the battery when the battery's charge was around 2 volts. Let's test the voltage cutoff and the float charge capability next. And the $10 Heck Hobo indicates that it's finished charging, but it's applying a 10 watt charge. Unfortunately, the Heck Hobo is definitely overcharging the battery at over 15 volts and is still trying to charge the battery. Not good. The purpose of a float charge is to maintain a battery at its fully charged state without overcharging it. I just applied a 2 amp load and the Heck Hobo is detecting a voltage drop and adding even more charge. The charger's top light shows that the battery is fully charged at 14.1 volts, but the motor power is supplying around 2.4 watts of energy. As the battery voltage dropped, the motor power ramped up output to the battery. The next peak's display indicates that the battery is fully charged at 13.9 volts, but is still delivering around 7 watts. I forced a voltage drop on the battery, and it did trigger the next peak to supply even more current. The 1.75 amp next peak indicates that the battery is full at 14.8 volts, and is still supplying a charge to the battery. And 14.8 volts definitely seems overcharged. As the battery voltage is dropping, the next peak is providing more energy to the battery. The sweater's display also indicates a full charge and the energy use meter is showing less than 1 watt of energy consumption. Just like the previous brands, the sweater did a good job of reacting to the voltage drop by adding more power to the battery. The Black & Decker shows that the battery is fully charged at 13.9 volts. However, the Black & Decker is still supplying almost 6 watts. Just like the previous chargers, the Black & Decker did a good job of reacting to the voltage drop. The solid green light indicates that the NOCO Genius 1 has finished charging the battery. The energy use meter is showing that the NOCO is no longer providing a charge to the battery. The voltage seems right on target at around 13.1 volts. 
Finoco also did a great job of responding to the voltage drop by adding more current to the battery. The Gulu is showing a full charge and the battery is at 13.3 volts. The energy use meter agrees that the Gulu has finished charging the battery. The Gulu cycled back on properly once the voltage drop began. The Hulkman should be finished charging the battery at around 13.6 to 13.8 volts, but is still supplying current to the battery. However, the Hulkman did a good job of reacting to the voltage drop. The Eco Worthy is supplying around 2 watts of current to the battery, and the battery is at 13.6 volts. Just like the previous brands, the Eco Worthy also responded appropriately to the voltage drop. The solid green light indicates that the Noco Genius 5 has finished charging the battery. The energy use meter is only showing a fraction of a watt, indicating that it's no longer supplying energy to the battery. And the battery is properly topped off at 13.3 volts. As the battery began experiencing a voltage drop, the Noco kicked in and began charging the battery. The battery tender completed the charging cycle and the energy use meter is less than 1 watt. 13.1 volts seems to be right on target for a flooded lead acid battery. The battery tender did a great job of reacting to the voltage drop. The SeaTech has finished charging the battery at 13 volts and energy use meters at around 1 half watt. As the battery's voltage dropped, the SeaTech increased its output. So all the battery charges did react properly to the voltage drop. When it comes to a standard flow charge for a 12 volt flooded lead acid battery, staying close to 13 volts is pretty safe. Some chargers don't deliver a true float mode and instead deliver a constant low voltage that could lead to overcharging and a shortened battery life. However, just over half the chargers achieve the flow charge of around 13.6 volts or less. The ambient temperature inside the shop is a very comfortable 75 degrees Fahrenheit, but the heck hobo is pretty hot at around 155 degrees. The motor power is also running a little bit warm at close to 140 degrees. The 6 amp next peak also has an internal fan that kept it pretty cool at around 94 degrees Fahrenheit. The 1.75 amp next peak is a little bit cooler at around 130 degrees. The sweater's internal fan is keeping the charger cool at around 83 degrees. The Black & Decker is a little bit warmer at 118 degrees. The Noco Genius 1 is very close to 100 degrees. The Google is staying pretty cool at around 100. The Hulkman's internal fan is doing a great job at around 73 degrees. The EcoWorthy is a little bit warmer at around 112 degrees Fahrenheit. The Noco Genius 5 is around 105. The battery tender is pretty cool at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And the Z-Tech is a little bit warm at 144 degrees. Let's safety test the chargers for reverse polarity protection. And the Heck Hobo claims to offer a built-in protection against reverse polarity, but the Heck Hobo just threw a big spark and now the charger is ruined. I tested all the other chargers and they all perform well without causing a spark or any sort of damage. So which battery charger is best? The chargers are organized from least expensive to most expensive. The left side of the chart includes some basic information about each charger. The right side of the chart includes the results of the review. Since the review included chargers that varied from 1 to 6 amps, it wouldn't be fair to rank the lower current chargers against the more powerful ones. However, I think the review provides a pretty clear assessment on which chargers to consider and which ones to avoid. Starting with the Heck Hobo, it's unable to charge a completely dead battery. It also throws a pretty aggressive spark when connected to a battery, and that could be a problem if there's a hydrogen gas leak with the battery. The Heck Hobo is not reverse polarity protected, and I run the charger by connecting connecting the clamps to the wrong terminals. 28 watts of charge is just over the 2 amp charging current rating. However, the Heck Hobo wasn't able to charge a battery with voltage starting below 10 volts. On a positive note, the Heck Hobo did begin the charging process and successfully charged the battery without needing any adjustment or input. Unfortunately, the Heck Hobo does provide a battery float voltage of 15.1 volts, which is definitely too high in my opinion and will shorten the battery life. Additionally, it doesn't really provide a true float capability and instead provides a continuous charge even after the battery is fully charged. Finally, the Heck Hobo became pretty hot at 155 degrees while charging the battery. The only two chargers that are capable of charging a completely dead battery includes the two NOCO chargers. Most of the battery chargers can be safely connected without producing a spark. All but one of the chargers offers reverse polarity protection. Also, all the chargers met their output current rating. All but two of the chargers can achieve charging a battery without stopping the charging process before reaching a full charge. There are a lot of opinions on this one, but in my opinion, a float charge above 14 volts is a little too high and 13.9 volts is marginal at best. If it's all about value and you're not concerned about achieving a quick charge, the Noco Genius 1 would definitely be my choice at a price of around $30. If you're looking for an even faster charger, the Hulkman is a great choice for a price of around $45. However, it's not designed to charge a completely dead battery. If I had to choose just one charger, I'd definitely go with the Noco Genius 5. It is capable of charging a completely dead battery, and 5 amps of current will charge a lot faster than the Noco Genius 1. Finally, the battery tender and SeaTech are also great chargers, but they're not designed to charge a completely dead battery. Please let me know if you'd like to see a review on the larger battery chargers, and I'll see what I can do. Finally, all the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested, so if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.